Hey, thank you very much for joining us here at Komodo Live. I'm Greg Poston, Senior Director of Product Marketing for Enterprise Products at Komodo, and I've been joined today by Leo Forsola, who is one of our distinguished product evangelists for Enterprise Products. Leo, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Greg. It's great to be here. Excellent. Um, so we're going to talk about security posture. Yeah, not that kind of posture. Security posture. And so let's kind of set the stage a little bit. Uh, Leo, attacks on all these companies happening all the time. Every time we turn on the news, there's another breach, someone else has been hacked. What's going on out there? It seems like everything's just going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah, it would seem that way, wouldn't it? And I think you know we can expect more and more of this in the years to come. FBI Director Robert Mueller once said, you know, there's two types of companies, uh, those that have been hacked and those that have yet to be hacked. Um, I think there's two additional types of companies, those that have been hacked but don't know it yet, <laughs> and also those companies that have been hacked and they're going to be hacked again and again and again. That's probably very true. <laughs> uh, seems like everyone's getting hacked. So let's talk about dollars. I mean, everyone's spending a lot of money on, uh, on pr trying to protect themselves. Now, are the hackers really making that much money out there? Oh, absolutely. And depending on what report you read, um, the numbers keep growing. Mm -hmm. If we take ransomware as an example, CryptoLocker alone during 2015, uh, there's estimated $325 million in losses. That's pretty big. That's big. That's pretty big. Now, that's just ransomware. If you take that and expand that, what are we talking about dollars-wise? Well, according to some Gartner estimates, by 2019 or 2020, the mm -hmm. uh, losses uh, are expected to rise to upwards of $2 trillion. That's a lot of money. Mm. $2 trillion. Now, if you look at some other trends, in that it looks like the industry is spending like $170 billion on protecting themselves. So even though we're spending all this money, it really doesn't seem to, to matter. So what can be done? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think it's like a billion dollar question for a lot of security companies. Um, you know, some of the trends that have been taking place uh, that, that you can attribute this to is, is, you know, there's a rise in the number of attacks. Mm -hmm. um, and this is uh, caused by the attack surface growing. Mm -hmm. and you've got mobility, you've got cloud, you've got to bring your own device. Um, and also, there seems to be a shift uh, away from servers to users. So attackers are going after users, mm -hmm. they're using techniques like phishing, spear phishing, water holes, mm -hmm. uh, attacks, and um, things like drive-by downloads. Yeah. yeah, that seems to be a big problem. And it seems like every time we put up some defense, the attackers find some way around it. And, and so there's got to be kind of a, a root cause for all this. And so talk to me a little bit about what security people are actually deploying today and, and why are attackers finding such an easy way around it? Yeah, if you look at a typical enterprise architecture, uh, typically the ones that these, these breach companies have deployed, they're, they're uh, thinking that they've deployed best of breed, state of the art technology, things mm -hmm. like next gen firewall, intrusion prevention, data loss prevention, content filtering, you name it, they've, they've spent their money on it, yet they're still, yeah. they're still experiencing these breaches. So what's the underlying cause? I mean, it seemed you, you talked about all these different devices and, um, and different solutions that people have deployed. You know, why are we still getting breached? I mean, you know, $170 billion worth of stuff out there and we're still getting breached. Yeah, you know, here at Komodo, we've spent a lot of time analyzing this problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we take a look at most of the solutions out on the market, we came to a surprising conclusion, mm. and that is most of them employ what we call a default allow architecture. Okay. Meaning, you know, if something is unknown, mm -hmm. it's not on some list that says, okay, it's good, or it's on some list that says, okay, it's bad, go ahead and allow it through. And so, so, okay, just wait, let me make sure I understand it because that seems like a really kind of a bad idea. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's not on a list, either good or bad, then it just gets allowed in. So all this, all these unknown files, these files that are, have unknown states, are just being allowed to freely kind of come onto your machine. Yeah, and, and that really boils down to there's a trade-off typically between usability and security. Mm. So if you want high security, it usually means your access to the files or applications is limited, mm -hmm. so there's low usability. Or if you want high usability, it usually means you suffer or sacrifice security. Okay, so I can, I can kind of get that. So oh, if I'm doing list-based stuff, 
There's, there's not really that many pieces of malware out there, right? Mm, okay, yeah. that was a loaded question, but you know, <laughs> uh, go for it anyway, Leo. <laughs> so depending, on, again, on what report you read, I mean, there's anywhere from 85 million new pieces of malware to 400 million new variants uh, detected in, in 2015 alone. That's a, a lot of malware. 85 million, so if I take that low number of 85 million, that I, means I would have to update that list somewhere in the neighborhood of like 270 something times a day. 270 something thousand times a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't put the numbers in my head uh, off, the, yeah. off the, uh, cuff like that, but yeah, I mean, uh, if you break down 400 million pieces of malware, new pieces of malware, that, you know, calculates into over a million new variants every single day. Every single day. Yeah. That means I'd have to update a list to protect myself that many times every day. Yeah. That doesn't times. seem like that would be a, a good idea at all. So, okay, so we have a, this posture of default allow, where we're allowing unknown files under a system, but if we do anything else, then we're sacrificing usability. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do? I mean, we can't just clamp down. I mean, I have files I want to download. There's applications out there I want to use. Business needs to continue to do work. What can we do to help protect ourselves? Well, so there's, you know, if you look at all the different solutions out there, you have ones that focus on doing analysis of unknown files, mm -hmm. things like sandboxing or, or isolation. Mm -hmm. And really what that's trying to do is analyze these files and come up with some sort of conclusion as, what, as to whether they're malicious or not. Mm -hmm. um, during that analysis time, there's a window of exposure. So you're exposed yeah. to being infected, you know, you'll experience some uh, collateral damage or patient zero type conditions. Okay. So what you want to do is eliminate that window of exposure. Mm -hmm. And here at Komodo, we think we've solved that problem. We've yeah. solved the malware problem in essence because we eliminate that window of exposure. So, okay, so that, that sounds like a good thing. I mean, I mean, I can understand if, you know, some other technologies out there, you, know, you let a few people get infected mm -hmm. for the better, betterment of everybody else. But that's still, like you said, still means you get patient zero at some point. So someone is still going to get infected. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about the Komodo way of doing things. How, how have we solved that mal malware problem? Yeah, so what we've done here is, is what we call our true default deny mm -hmm. architecture or posture. So basically, if something is known good, then it's, it's allowed to execute. Mm -hmm. But if something is uh, unknown, uh, then we'll, we'll analyze that file. Okay. But rather than having a window of exposure, we place that file or application in containment. So mm -hmm. the, the user is allowed to access the file while the analysis is being performed. So, while, so let me see if I get this straight. So a known file comes down. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we place it into a little protective bubble, a little containment, while it's being analyzed. Now, isn't that going to be there for a long time? Doesn't that anal analysis take a long time to happen? Yeah, that's a good question. So what happens is that file is being placed into a container on the mm -hmm. local machine, mm -hmm. and the analysis is being run. Simultaneously, it's being uploaded to our cloud service called Valkyrie, where similar analysis is taking place while well, that file is also executed in a sandbox environment, and a, a verdict is rendered typically within 45 seconds. That's pretty fast. Very fast. 45 seconds doesn't seem like a long period of time to me. That We could live with that. Now, and what you're saying, though, is when that, that verdict is happening, that analysis is happening, I'm still able to use that application and kind of interact with it? Yeah, that's correct. So what happens is while that file is running in containment, a shadow environment is created. So that's a virtualized environment and a complete with shadow CPU, shadow memory, mm -hmm. shadow file system, shadow mm -hmm. registry. So any changes that take place in that shadow environment are not preserved. So uh, like, let's take an example of ransomware. If you downloaded a file and you clicked on that file, mm -hmm. you'd see a little green border around the dialog window that popped up. Okay. That means that file is being run in a container. It's running in this shadow environment. Mm -hmm. um, so if uh, the application tries to encrypt files and demand money from you, you can laugh at it with impunity and just close the window by clicking on the, uh, on the uh, close button. Yeah, and just kind of reset the sandbox type yeah. of thing. That sounds pretty cool, and laughing at the ransomware guys, which is always a nice thing to be able to do. <laughs> now, when I stopped hearing about you know, shadow environments or virtual environments, I start thinking, okay, 
So there must be CPU OS requirements. You know, this is usually you talk about VMs. That's a, a, a heavyweight type of situation there. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true. So there are some solutions out there that will take those applications and run them in these micro virtual machines mm -hmm. or micro VMs as they call them, um, which basically it, it takes a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. Very CPU dependent. Uh, requires specialized hardware that enables virtualization and is very taxing on the resources. Mm -hmm. Komodo's approach to it is a one container for the entire uh, machine. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not at the uh, hypervisor level, so it's in essence a very, very lightweight container. Okay, so it doesn't have a lot of CPU requirements or, or memory requirements. I mean, so do I need a specific level of the OS to run this? I mean, I got a bunch of machines that are still on Windows 97. You know, mm -hmm. Am I, can I run it on there? Yeah, so we don't require specific versions of, of software. So we'll mm -hmm. run on any uh, version of Windows, um, Macintosh, Linux, mobile devices. Um, we, our technology is available. So that sounds pretty good. You know, so, you know, in a default deny or true default deny uh, environment that Komodo, like Komodo is presenting, uh, we are blocking the bad, because mm -hmm. we know what those are. We're allowing the good, and then any of the unknown files that need to come down that haven't been analyzed run in a container, and then we go out and analyze them, figure out whether they're good or bad, and then update the entire master list of everything. Yeah, so we, we take that layered approach. So mm -hmm. we'll take all of those technologies that we mentioned before, so static mm -hmm. and dynamic analysis, reputation analysis, behavioral or machine learning, mm -hmm. sandboxing, and our own unique uh, technology called containment. So we use a combination of all of that. Um, Komodo is you know, the world's largest certificate authority, so we have the largest database of known good applications and publishers, so that, mm. that's where we can tell if something's good. Mm. We also have over 85 million installations of our, of our software, um, and what that does is provides a huge crowdsourced database or, or sample set of malicious software. Hmm. So we can create that database of known bad, known good, and anything that's not in those two databases gets put into containment. And that allows us to be able to have that true default deny architecture where we really are truly denying the, uh, the bad out there and mm -hmm. making sure that we're not having any kind of suffering of uh, usability at all. Correct. So we're maximizing security, maximizing mm -hmm. usability. Well, Leo, that is game changing. I mean, that will absolutely protect everyone against all this new malware and breaches out there. Malware problem solved. I like it. I like malware problem solved. Thank you very much for joining us today and thank you for all your expertise. I really appreciate it. To all of you out there, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope this was very educational. Join us next time. We've got lots of other episodes for you to watch, and thank you very much. <laughs>